Wow. So both of you took the chance, jumped into the opportunity and went ahead until now. So which brought you into the concept of agile testing? The first book was written in 2009, if I'm not wrong. So what is agile testing? Maybe if you can give the definition for all of us here who maybe have not heard about it yet. Our official definition, collaborative testing practices that occur continuously from inception to delivery and beyond, supporting frequent delivery for our customers. Testing activities focus on building quality into the product, using fast feedback loops to validate our understanding, and the practices strengthen and support the idea of whole team responsibility for quality. We spent a lot of time trying to put that together, but really what it means is play nice in the sandbox, work together, think about testing from the very beginning. When I think about this, and we might talk about it a little bit later, is that definition could be applied to the term we're using these days, which is holistic testing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that was a community effort. We got a lot of input Absolutely. from people in the community. We've written a couple blog posts on as we were developing that. And so you can get more details on our website, agiletester.ca slash blog and search around for that. But yes, Janet, that's a really good point that the definition still works, even if we use a different label. So if I read the descriptions, definitely first it's like there are so many things mentioned there. But there are a few key things that I observe. The first thing is to mention about this concept called whole team. What do you mean by whole team? What is the relation with testing as a whole team? In our experience, being successful at delivering valuable software products to customers is an effort that requires everybody on the team to be committed to it and work together. We've seen over the years that testing at the end only by tester doesn't work. Even when I worked in waterfall projects, everybody still did testing the whole time. Waterfall doesn't mean you have to do a bad job. <laughs> and having that mindset where we've all talked about that everybody on the team, regardless of our specialty, here's the level of quality we want in our software. This is what we want to get to. This is our goal. And we're committed to getting there because we know it'll be hard. We know we're running into a lot of obstacles. We'll have a lot of hard problems to solve. But together with all our different skills and experiences, we'll be able to do it because we're committed to do it. We're not going to just throw our hands up and give up. That's what it takes. If it's just part of the team, even if some of the developers like, oh yeah, I really care about quality. I'll write some unit tests. But if that's all they do and they don't involve the testers or the testers go off and try to do all the testing on their own, we've just seen it doesn't work. The state of DevOps survey has really supported that with hard data. That was Janice and my experience over all the years. But then we saw data from that survey support it. When developers own the testing, when they own the automated tests, Yet they created them and maintained them along with the testers and the testers help them with all these other activities like exploratory testing. That's what correlates with high performing teams. I know as humans, we don't pay attention necessarily to hard data, but we have the hard data to back up our views. And it starts from the very beginning. That question, how are we going to test this? If we start mm -hmm. that at the very beginning, that drives the testing all the way through. So I think I agree. It's a very important distinction having the whole team really taking responsibility of how to test the application or the system that they are building. Because as you can tell in the industry, I'm sure throughout your consulting experience as well, there are many teams still have the silo responsibility. Developer just build the software while there's another team called the testing team, QA team, quality engineering, whatever you call it, does the testing part. So what in your opinion should change in order to make it more like a whole team concept? all this still kind of like a common trend in the industry, I can tell, at least from my part of the world, what should change in order to go towards this whole team concept? Well, and I'm going to take this from Elizabeth Hendrickson. It's one of my favorite quotes. Testing is an activity that happens throughout. It is not a phase that happens at the end. So if we truly believe that testing is an activity that happens from the very beginning, when we first see that feature, that very first feature starting to think about what are the risks? To be able to do that, that means that who's ever thinking about testers, if you have testers on the team, if you don't have testers on the team, start thinking about the risks at the very beginning and start thinking about how are we going to mitigate that? And a lot of that mitigation involves testing. It starts there. And so moving those testing activities, thinking about them early, I think that's how we're going to change it. Don't bring in testers when you've got code to test. Bring them in early to start thinking about those risks and really talking about the level of quality because that's how we start it. And I think that has to change. It's the mindset of the team and individuals. 
because it's how we think about testing. So I don't use software tester. I don't use that term for myself because I think it's more than software. We test ideas. We test assumptions. We're testing many things. And so it's not only the software. I think we test the product and the product is the whole. Yeah, which you mentioned is like a mindset, right? So in the book, you mentioned mm -hmm. agile testing mindset. So I can also see observation from at least my part of the world. So testing is always deemed as like maybe a lower part of engineering, right? Where people assume they just do manual testing, doing the repetitive mm -hmm. jobs. I know that some testers are like good programmers as well. They write great automation and all that. But still, unfortunately, there are still these misconceptions. Also, there's this term called quality engineering, quality assurance. So people think they are the deficient that is responsible for quality. So I think all these maybe need your advice, how to change this mindset so that we can move towards this agile testing mindset. Again, where everyone will involve in the testing and really cares about quality since the beginning. Yeah, Tana and I were just chatting about that this morning because it's not easy. And I'm just trying to think back to how did my mindset changed? I remember the first two week iteration on my first extreme programming team. I was working for a startup consulting company and most of the first two weeks I was helping another client on site. So I came back just like the day before we were going to demo to the customers for our very first iteration. One of the things I did was, okay, I'm going to start up the server and we got this little application going and I'm going to log in as two different users and the server crashed. And I was like, what? We can't show this to the customers. It's terrible. You can't even have two people on it. Fortunately, in Extreme Programming, you have a coach part of your team. Our coach said, now Lisa, we don't have a story in this iteration for supporting more than one user. The reason for that is our customer is developing this to show people the potential features of their product because they need funding. They're not going to use it. They're just going to demonstrate it. They don't need to have two people logged in. And I was like, what? What? Whoa, that's mind blowing. <laughs> to me, quality was the server stays up. It's reliable. Everything works. But now the quality is what the customer needs. And we really have to focus on that. So I really think it's an ongoing process. I think it needs training. I think it needs daily coaching from somebody who's done it before, who knows what they're doing to help the team. Janet and I like to say, if you haven't already been on a high-performing agile or whole team approach team, you can't understand what the unicorn magic of that is. You really have to experience it. And so, you know, if people can get somebody, hire somebody, at least temporarily, who does know it, who does understand it and can help the team get over it because mindset switches are hard. It's a cultural change. As Janet says, you know, we're going to focus now on preventing bugs, not catching bugs at the end. We're not going to be the quality police because it's not our job to determine what quality is. It's the customers. So now we've got to find out what does the customer want? That's a big part of our job as testers is to help everybody understand, get a shared understanding of what the customer really needs. That's a really good story, Lisa. I wish I would have heard that 20 years ago. Because that's exactly it. From a testing perspective, the hardest thing is to understand that we are testing this small slice. We are making sure that this small slice works right now. Doesn't mean that we're going to give it to the customer right now. If that's what they need, if they can use it, yes. But from a testing perspective, that is the hardest thing, is to understand that their testing is narrow for this particular story. Once testers get used to that, they realize how much easier it is to keep testing and adding complexity. You have that first story and then that works. You add complexity and you can test that and that works. You just keep wrapping that complexity around and you get a solid feature. And I think that makes the world of difference. But it is a hard mindset to think that we have to do that narrow. It's funny. I have to laugh here. I'm just going to add a little story. Because I can't talk without my hands. So <laughs> this is a podcast. But you have to visualize that I'm holding my hands up and I'm doing narrow focus. <laughs> That's true. That's the thing in my early days, early, even for the first few years that I was on Agile Teams, my teammates had to keep reminding me, Lisa, I know you just think you found a bug. Could you just make sure the happy path works first so that we can be confident that we've at least started in a good way? Because, you know, I was always going off in the weeds. Oh, I bet there's a bug over here. No, Lisa, we think it works, but we want you to help us know that it works. 
driving development with those tests, I was like creating huge numbers. I was with the product owner. We're creating these huge matrices of test cases and expected outputs and giving that to developers. Okay, here's what you should do. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't see the forest for the tree. So can you just give us a happy path? Let's all make sure that works. Then let's add on like one unusual scenario and just do it a step at a time. And that was something I had to learn. Because I had been more used to, even though I was trying to always collaborate with developers and test it, still we were doing big bang things. So I was getting a whole bunch of stuff to test at once. And that's a quite a different experience. Yeah. And I think when I've taught our course hundreds of times, and I think that's the biggest takeaway most of the time from the whole team, because we teach it to the whole team, is that they can do that one slow piece and add complexity as they go and test it. And I think that's a real showstopper for a lot of people just going, wow, as you said. I was laughing when you shared that because <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about application that should just work for one people. We always assume that it could work for multiple people. So you brought a point where sometimes, yeah, testing is hard because you don't know what kind of slice that you should be focusing on. And I think you mentioned the key point where we should test within a smaller scope at complexity afterwards. And it seems like this kind of like aligned to your concept of holistic testing, where you have this short cycle from build, test, deploy, and all that. So maybe this is a good time to actually introduce what do you mean by holistic testing that you are talking pretty lately? I'll take this one because there's a lot of talk about shift left, shift right. And when I hear shift left, shift right, I think of a lateral line, like a horizontal line. I'm thinking that software development isn't like that. So the DevOps loop started and I think, that's great. The first time I had seen that was in Discover to Deliver. Ellen Godestiner and Mary Gorman's book, they had this nice little loop, the DevOps loop. And then Dan Ashby in one of his blog posts talked about continuous testing. He said, this DevOps loop is great, but where does testing? They always had this choke, this phase for testing and it didn't work. So he made this, we test here. And he put all around the loop, we test here and here and here and everywhere. And I thought, Perfect. And I used that for a long time, but still something bothered me about the DevOps loop. So Lisa come up with one iteration and then we just kept playing with it. And finally, I kind of had this little mini light bulb moment and took the, the loop as it is now and wrote a blog post on it, showing that testing really does start from the discovery. So when we start thinking about discovery, that's the very beginning, thinking about the risks and planning for it, going through the building. And those are all stages that we do, whether we go really fast through them because we're doing a small story, we discover, we understand, then we deploy and test. We might put it into production, but one way or the other, we have an internal release even if we don't put it to production. And then thinking about what we learn from it. So it really is looking at that whole cycle, thinking about testing holistically. When I read that definition, and I hadn't really thought about that definition of agile testing, and it's very applicable to holistic testing, but I'm going to let Lisa talk about why we call it holistic testing versus agile testing these days. I mean, obviously it was Janet that came up with this idea, but part of the problem was Dan Ashby used continuous testing, which made a lot of sense to us. And then somehow people took the term continuous testing and co-opted it to only mean the automated regression tests that run in continuous integration. And so when you said continuous testing, that's what people thought of. And it's like, oh, that's like a teeny tiny little part of testing. It's an important part. What describes it better? So Jana came up with the word holistic. And yeah, because whole team approach, going through the whole cycle, the testing activities are in the whole cycle. And it really sums it up. What I found interesting is until just recently, I was still a hands-on tester on a feature team and working in a company with several different teams. I shared Janet's blog post on our Slack. One of the really experienced testers on another team was like, oh, uh, and he had a light bulb moment too. He's like, this model is great. I can finally explain to people what it is we do because it really summed up when there are well-performing teams that are doing a good job of the holistic approach and there's a tester on that team kind of acting as a testing consultant, guiding them, leading that effort. Now he can take it and explain to other teams, this is what we do. I have a way to show you now. Other people have also come back with that kind of feedback. One of the ways it resonated was people who are already doing it recognize it. So we hope it'll help other people then be able to achieve that holistic approach and grow that in their own teams. 